Okay, we have to take another integral. This one's from the MIT integration, be 2006, problem 42. We've got the integral of the square root of one minus sine two x dx. Okay, the first thing I noticed here is just having sine two x inside the square root. This has come up a lot lately, especially in the 2006 integration B. What we can do is actually manipulate this into a different form where it's gonna be easier to deal with. One thing we can notice is if when you have sine x plus cosine x and you just square this whole thing and you multiply it out, you're gonna get sine squared x plus cosine squared x, but that part's just one right there. And then multiplying out the middle terms, you end up with two sine x cos x. But this is just the double angle formula for sine, so we can simplify this down to just one plus sine two x. And that's really similar to what we have there, but not quite. We need a different version of this. What we can do is look at sine x minus cosine x. Doing the same thing, squaring it out, you're gonna get sine squared x plus cosine squared x just like this. So our first part's gonna be one. And then multiplying out the middle terms, we're gonna get the same thing but with a minus sign. So we get our minus two sine x cos x. Rewriting this with the double angle formula, we have one sine two x. And so what we have right here is the same thing as we have right here. So we can take so going backwards, we can write it like this and take this, put it back into the integral inside the square root. But now one thing I can do here because this is squared, I can actually reverse the order on this. Not that it really matters, but I'm just gonna do it this way. So I'm gonna reverse it, basically just multiplying in a minus, but inside the square, that's just gonna be like multiplying by one. So I'll write it like this just to set it up. But now of course this is squared inside the square root. So what we can do is rewrite this and we can have, we can get rid of the square root and write it as absolute value cosine x minus sine x. But here, the tricky thing is there's not really a good way to remove the absolute value sign on this because we don't really know if cosine is greater than sine or sine is greater than cosine. If we could imagine, maybe just focus on the first quadrant of a unit circle. Well then, in this region, in this first region between zero and pi over four, here, cosine is always gonna be greater. If we had bounds on it, like zero to pi over four, then we could just drop this because we would know this is always positive. But the trouble is in here, sine's greater and then we're gonna have negative values. So what I'm gonna do for now is basically what the person did in the contest. I'm gonna drop the absolute value just so we can continue with this. And what I'll do is bring a plus or minus out front for now just to say that we don't know. It could be positive or negative, we're not sure. So then get rid of this and we can go ahead and integrate. So integrating this thing, I'll bring across, we'll leave the plus minus for now. Integral of cosine is gonna be sine x. And then integral of sine x is gonna be minus cosine x, minus times minus gives me plus cosine x plus c, and that's it. And this was actually the correct answer from the integration b, but you may have one problem with this. We don't really like having plus or minus here. That's not great. So maybe let's see if we can transform this and write it a different way so we don't have to have the plus minus. Okay, so here's how they had the solution and the answer key. This is actually also how they have it in Wolfram Alpha. What they did is they took, this right here is the solution we have right here. So these are the same. And then they kind of created this thing right here this one minus sine two x, this is, this is basically, this is the original problem. This is the same thing as this. And what we found is this is the same when you reduce this as absolute value cosine x minus sine x. So then bringing this part in as well, if we write in this cosine x minus sine x, you'll just notice that when cosine is greater than sine, this is gonna be positive. We drop the absolute value, then this, then in that case, this whole thing just reduces, it just cancels to one. But if it's the other case where sine is greater, like we saw between pi over four and pi over two, we drop the absolute value and minus sine comes out and then this thing is gonna become minus one. So basically this is kind of a fancy way of saying plus or minus, but actually it has more information because it kind of tells you where it's plus and where it's minus. So, so I think this is probably a more descriptive solution. Okay, anyway, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.